Critical care medicine has made extraordinary advances in the ability to save lives. Time is brain. Time is tissue. Pharmacology combined with modern technology has allowed us to nearly cheat death. But at what cost? Ventilator days extended as well as length of stay. Patients risked a spiraling cascade that set them up for negative outcomes, including increased risks of delirium, neuromuscular weakness, pressure ulcers. Often the patients survived, some lost their jobs, some were too debilitated to care for themselves. Then someone had the audacity to suggest that patients were being over-sedated, which was causing negative outcomes suffered long after we saved the patient's life. The ABCDE bundle is a coordinated effort between multiple disciplines for the management of critically ill patients to prevent delirium and neuromuscular weakness and to allow patients to have more control over their life. Its implementation has a tremendous impact on the culture and the workflow of critical care as we know it. The following interviews are comments from frontline staff who candidly speak of barriers and successes. When I first heard we were going to be initiating an early mobilization protocol, I was, I guess, fearful is the right word. I, everything falls on the nurse, every responsibility. If a line comes out, if a patient falls, um, it's all on the nurse. So I had a lot of fear, you know, just one more thing to add to my task list on a critically ill patient. Everyone was just kind of doing things independently. There really wasn't a presence of PT and OT. Uh, on our unit at all, so we really depended a lot, uh, probably m more so than we should have, on our CNAs to help us mobilize, and there's, there's only one or two of them. I, I definitely think uh, the PT and OT coming around and asking us the mobility safety screen questions um, did bridge a gap because it made me realize that they were thinking about the safety of mobility and it made me not feel so alone in the process like I wasn't the only one that had to bear this huge burden that they were thinking about all the different factors too. The elements on the safety screen are extensive um, and so to hear a PT and an OT ask you all these questions about MI and seizures and all these different factors um, that uh, it, it really gave you an appreciation for um, their commitment and uh, it definitely helped to bridge the gap. When we were rolling out this bundle, um, we really had to fine tune and kind of standardize um, making sure that our sedation vacations were getting done and that we were talking to respiratory therapy um, as far as coordinating the, the breathing trials. You really kind of can better engage the patient if you're keeping them um, just kind of in a haze, rather than, I think, kind of a more old school thought process is that your patient's sedated, they're safer, they're not going to pull anything, they're not going to move anywhere, but um, it just wasn't leading to the best patient outcomes. After I had a body fluid exposure during the mobilization of my ill patient, um, there was a huddle and we kind of determined that each discipline was acting, each team member was acting on their own. We weren't looking at the overall picture, and we developed a one, two, three, go policy where uh, each discipline has to be ready, and there's one team leader who is usually the RN who says, now we're able to move. A lot of nurses had a lot of fear that once they had um, a value of CAM ICU positive or negative, that that was in fact a diagnosis and um, such as out of our nursing scope of practice when in fact the CAM ICU is not a diagnosis. It is simply an assessment that we uh, go forth to the physician and um, from there on they may come up with a diagnosis and a plan of care that we as nurses um, assist with implementation. The ABCD bundle has completely changed my uh, nursing workflow and the order in which I prioritize my behaviors in the morning. To have them, for instance, be walking with just an IV pole or a person is not enough support. So having this walker, they can just 
sort of rock and be dizzy, but they can still walk. It's absolutely amazing. So this walker is one of the most essential tools to ambulating the intubated patient. It also gives you uh, a place to sort of put items. We're doing this ABCD not as just another task. It's for the patient. It's not that they're patients for the person that we're taking care of. It's for them as a human being, making sure that they get out of the hospital and they continue their daily lives. Priority rehab at our hospital means each member of the disciplines get together at a specific time that's been designated to mobilize our patient. Respiratory therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, convene in the patient's room at the same time, and we work as a team to get this patient out of bed, sometimes just dangling. With this program, we were able to have a dedicated time, which was called priority rehab. So that time was pre-scheduled, and we were able to take that time and work it into the patient care. We're um, mobilizing patients in the ICU, so we're getting them out of bed, we're walking with them, we're working on activities of daily living. Um, we also introduce sensory integration, um, so we're, we have weighted vests for patients that have a difficult time with proprioceptive input and kind of soothing and calming our ETOH patients. The journal is used to track the patient's progress in the ICU. Uh, family members can write down special events that have happened um, and then therapists are coming in and writing what the patients have done for the day. Nurses are adding things so that patients can kind of come take a look back at how far they've come. A lot of them don't remember what they were doing the day before so it's good for them to go back and kind of gives them a boost of confidence in what they've been doing and a little bit of hope. Everybody worked together including the patients and the families were made aware of what was going on and it enhanced a lot of quality of life for the patients. This patient has undergone a significant infection in the chest. They currently happen to have six chest tubes, one drain tube coming out of the middle of the chest, as well as multiple art lines, as well as blood transfusion, and they are currently intubated. With the assistance of the respiratory therapist there to monitor for the ventilator, the physical therapist and the um, nursing, we're able to get the patient up into a sitting position and ultimately with the use of a mechanical lift, we did get them out of the bed and into a bedside chair. The patient at the time initially was a bit sedated um, with careful monitoring, the nurse was able to titrate down the sedative and the patient became much more alert and actually began to not only track with his eyes, but actually began to mouth some words. It was wonderful to get them up and out of bed for the first time. And some of the sickest patients have really made great strides forward from getting up and moving out of bed. The families see how much work is involved, sometimes an hour, to get the patient up with six different people. And I think that them seeing that happen gives them a new renewed trust and appreciation for how sick their family member is and also the journey that they've taken from being ill to improving. Progressive mobility has really um, connected all of these different disciplines, all of these different areas. Um, within our healthcare team. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to mobilize these patients. Um, and we know that now. Um, so the culture has really changed on our unit as far as a willingness to help one another uh, when we know a patient um, is difficult to move, when they have a lot of lines, um, you know, when there's just a lot going on in the room. Um, we want to help each other and it has changed the culture as far as initiative goes. There's a lot less reluctance, there's a lot less fear. Everything nowadays is data driven. If you can't show it, you're, it's not going to, you're not going to go anywhere with it. You're not going to get the funding, you're not going to get the grants in order to be able to make changes. And data also helps in uh, showing patients and showing the, the nurses 
that, yeah, they're making improvements. They're, they have made change. This is where you started, now this is where you're going. It's not been an easy journey, but it's something that has been, we've been successful at. We can no longer be fueled by the success of saving a patient's life only to return them to home as a mere shadow of their former selves. We must continue saving lives, keeping in mind that patient care and service will ultimately be measured not only by our quality outcomes, but by the return to a life that patients hope to achieve. <laughs>